In this corner, the Mafex Scarlet Spider by Medicom. And in this corner, the all-new Marvel Legends Retro Card Scarlet Spider by Hasbro. We've previously pitted Marvel Legends against Mafex to see which black costume Spidey was best. Today, it's an all-new battle between East vs. West to figure out which Ben Riley is the better bang for your buck. Starting with the packaging, and it's a battle between a retro card and a window box. The retro card, of course, is modeled off of the old animated series by Toy Biz. It features some classic style artwork, and then on the back has some almost Ikea-like instructions on how to swap the hands, as well as a bio. Mayfix automatically gets points for being my favorite color. Admittedly, the fronts of their boxes are a bit on the cluttered side, but I really love all the figure photography showing off all the accessories and posing options. Mayfix also goes the extra mile to include a non-reproducible hologram to let you know it's official and not a bootleg. And then of course there is this little teddy bear witnessing a crime. Don't get me wrong, I see this retro card and I'm a kid again. Divorced from nostalgia, however, this is definitely more collector friendly and also takes up less space. For packaging, this round goes to Mafex. Moving on to presentation, both Scarlet Spiders stand in the ballpark of six and a quarter inches with Marvel Legends being ever so slightly bigger. Mayfex shares parts with their black costume Spidey, whereas Marvel Legends was built off of the Renew Your Vows buck. Mayfex has a new head. Although you can't see it because of the hoodie, the torso has been re-sculpted to remove the spider logo. Additionally, the hands have been re-sculpted to get rid of the outline of the white trapezoids on the backs of the black costume Spider-Man gloves. And there are also web shooters which have been slid and glued over the wrists. He has a belt, but it's a floating piece. His calves, however, have been re-sculpted to accommodate these ankle pouches. As for Marvel Legends, the ankle pouches are a separate piece sliding over the leg. At first I thought that they were reused from the original Scarlet Spider, but upon closer inspection they are in fact new. Compared to Mafex, the Marvel Legends ones do have more sculpted detail, and also more painted detail. On that note, one of the biggest differences between them are the belts. The Mafex one is just a simple brown strap with some silver capsules and a belt buckle, but looking at the box, the Scarlet Spider's belt was a bit more involved than that. We also see it on the Hasbro. Marvel Marvel Legends correctly made the entire buckle silver with a nice big red button in the center. That said, Hasbro did add some extraneous detail to the strap. As for the Marvel Legend web shooters, I expected those to be reused from their recent Ben Riley, but those are actually new as well. And just like Mafex, he has a new head sculpt. The Mafex one is fine and does come with two additional heads we'll be looking at in playability, but overall I do like this one as well, and all those sharp angles really do feel very 90s. The biggest difference between the two are the hoodies. Mafex has a soft goods one, whereas Marvel Legends is sculpted. The soft goods does a great job of hiding the joints, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that this one does as well. It's just a soft rubber piece over the torso. Well, counting the hood, it's actually two pieces. Flipping them around, of course, that one stays in place, whereas the Mafex one is actually functional and has a wire in it. I really do like the functionality, but overall, I do prefer the sculpted version. For one thing, it adds a bit of bulk, whereas this one is very form-fitting compared to how we normally looked in the comic. Additionally, the sculpting allows for the more comics accurate tattered torn up edges whereas the fabric version is nice and cleanly stitched additionally the spider is much bigger and more comics accurate on the hasbro one and also more comics accurate he has it on the front and the back where i do think mafex shines however is in the colors this hoodie is such a rich deep blue whereas the hasbro one is a bit muted in fact the colors on the hasbro one are kind of muted in general side by side the mafex is a much deeper richer shade of red oddly enough the colors on the original marvel legends were a lot deeper also. Additionally, the Mafex benefits from having a slight amount of shading to bring out the musculature. And if you saw across the Spider-Verse, you know just how important that is. Lastly, the biggest visual difference between the two are the joints. Both figures are pinless, but in general, Hasbro does a much better job of integrating those sculpt lines, whereas on Mafex, they're pretty obvious, especially when you get to the legs. On the other hand, Mafex benefits from having fewer joint seams. His articulation comes from a hip ball and an ankle ball, whereas Marvel Legends has thigh cut and boot cut. Regardless, and like I said in my black costume verses, I just prefer the silhouette that Marvel Legends cuts. The Mafex figure has a lot to love, but the better attention to detail, better proportions, and better integrated joints makes the Hasbro Ben better all around. For presentation, this round goes to Legends. Would you like a few extra bucks to put towards your collection? If so, sign up for Whatnot using my link and you can get a $15 credit towards your first purchase. Whatnot combines auctions 
with live streams. Opening it up and it already suggests a bunch of topics that you might be interested in, or you can search for things on your own. Thanks to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Again, link in the description. Moving on to posability, and the biggest question is how that new vest affects articulation. From the top though, and both figures' heads are on dumbbell joints, but already there are some differences. The Mafex figures have an extra bend in the bar to add to range. Marvel Legends, however, has an extra notch cut in the back of the neck. Also, you'll notice that these balls are very incompatible, so head swaps are not going to be possible. One extra thing that Mafex does have going for it, though, is an extra ball joint at the base of the neck, nicely hidden by the hoodie. Surprisingly, both get a fairly equivalent up, but just look at how gappy this is. I have seen some gappy Marvel Legends necks in my time, but this is less like Scarlet Spider and more like nearly headless Nick. Bringing Mafex back in, he gets a much better down, and while both get tilt, the extra neck joint makes Scarlet Spider's deeper and a lot more natural. But of course, both can get all the way around. Moving down and both bends get a fairly equivalent up, with maybe Mafex being slightly higher, Marvel Legends has a butterfly joint, whereas Mafex has what I like to call a rotator cuff. Both of them have bicep swivel, and both have pinless double elbows, with Mafex having the deeper bend, but that's partly because Marvel's arms are a bit thicker. Welcome to the gun show! At the ends of the arms, though, and all Marvel Legends can do is swivel and hinge, whereas Mafex has wrist balls nicely hidden by the web shooters that allow him to swivel and hinge either up and down or side to side. Shifting to the torso, and this is the question of the hour. Just for a moment, I'm going to bring out some uncovered base bodies so you can see what we're working with. Mafex has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. Marvel Legends has a diaphragm joint and a reverse ab crunch. We know that this nice stretchy fabric isn't going to get in the way, so it all comes down to the plastic one. Not only does it not get in the way, but Marvel Legends actually has the deeper arch back. As for hunching forward, Mafex has a slight edge, but this is a lot more even than I expected. He even has a surprisingly good amount of tilt, though Mafex does edge him out in that department as well. Even so, I expected this hoodie to be an articulation killer, but that's not the case. Below the belt, and both figures have ball-jointed hips, but admittedly, Mafexes are a bit more obvious. They can take this high, with Marvel Legends actually being higher, but both figures also have drop-down hips. Utilizing that, Marvel Legends is still higher. Additionally, he can split this wide, and Mafex is pretty much equivalent. Moving down the leg, I've already shown you that Marvel Legends has thigh cut, whereas Mafex gets a twist in the hip. Both get pinless double knee, with Legends actually being a bit deeper this time. Both figures have toe articulation, with Legends being the deeper bend. And whereas Legends has boot cut rotation, Mafex gets his swivel from an ankle ball, but both can hinge. And like Peter Parker's identity back and forth during the Clone Saga, pivot. While we're here, by the way, it's worth noting that Mafex figures do not have peg holes in their feet. In terms of range, there are some things that Mafex can do better, and there are some things that Legends does better. For poseability, I'm gonna meet in the middle and call this round a draw. Moving on to playability, and starting with what they have in common, Marvel Legends is preloaded with fists, and Mafex is preloaded with fists. Marvel Legends has wall-crawling hands, Mafex has wall-crawling hands. Marvel Legends has thwippies, and you guessed it, Mafex has thwippies. Unfortunately, that's the end of the accessories that come with Legends. Mafex also has relaxed hands, magnetic hands, and feet. And if all that wasn't enough, he also comes with a set of web-holding hands for his nine included web lines. That includes these two extra long, look out here comes the Spider-Man lines, these two shorter lines with fun spaghetti webbing at the end, as well as this longer extra fun spaghetti web line. And then for Thwippin, he's got a couple of shorties and a couple of longies. It's worth noting that you can use the Thwippies on Marvel Legends, and in fact, the web shooter does a pretty good job of hiding the effect. We're not through yet, though, because not only does Mafex have this head that he comes preloaded with, he also has this one. This one is very similar to the black costume. He also has this one, which, while not identical, is pretty similar to the Marvel Legends one. And then capping the whole thing off is that patented Mafex flight stand, which includes several interchangeable pieces. Fortunately for Legends, playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. 
And this section is really important for Mafex because they haven't made any Spidey villains or supporting characters. Starting with a Scarlet Spider comparison, and here we have the Rhino Wave version. For a Legends comparison, and here we have Renew Your Vows and the Symbiote Spidey. And for a Mafex comparison, here we have Classic and Black Costume. For some Spider-Man supporting characters, and here we have Spider-Gwen, as well as the comic style version of Miles Morales. Next up is Felicia Hardy, the Black Cat, the two-pack version of Mary Jane Watson, and Gwen Stacy, whose clone kicked off the entire clone saga nonsense. I mean saga. Of course, behind the clones is Dr. Miles Warren, the Jackal. Unfortunately, mine's legs are pretty bowed. But for a small selection of other Spidey villains, and here we have the Green Goblin, the Walmart-exclusive Retro Card Lizard, Electro, who I feel shouldn't be bigger than the Lizard, Retro Card Sandman, Retro Card Scorpion, and Retro Card Mysterio. For a Venom comparison, I've selected the Amazon 3-pack version. Here we have Carnage, and, well, you know. For a relative scale comparison, here are Scarlet Spiders with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Both figures do a fantastic job of mixing and matching with the rest of your collection, but while I do mean it when I say that playability is more than accessories, the sheer number of options that Metacom comes with cannot be beat. For playability, this round goes to Mafex. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As of this recording, Mafex is still available for retail on sites like Big Bad Toy Store and Amazon for just over $100, whereas Marvel Legends is just now hitting shelves and goes for $25. These are both really good figures, and either one would be a great addition to your collection. It really boils down to whether or not you personally prefer the added play value of Mafex, or the mass market affordability of Marvel Legends. For price, I am giving this round to Legends, but the battle is a tie. Which figure do you like better, and in general, where does Scarlet Spider rank for you? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.